Welcome to part four of my building, the Flying Dutchman. I know it's been over a month since I've posted anything and I've had a lot going on in that period of time. Part of it was good. I made a short, quick trip to Hilton Head Island for a, a uh, early summer vacation. That was enjoyable. That took about 10 days out of the month. But before that, I had some real disasters occur on the construction, starting with some copper leafing of all the metal parts and it just, it would not take. I'll cover a little bit of it in the video. From what I could tell, it was just eating away the finish. It, it did not give me the patina color that I wanted. So after at least four attempts, I finally gave up and, and used an alternative method. So I'll show that in this video. The next area that I had difficulty with was wiring. And I had gotten this uh, magnet wire and it's enameled wire, it has a thin coating of enamel on it so it won't short out very thin and it works great in tight spaces. The problem I had is I used the same color. So it could very easily get mixed up as to whether it was the positive lead or the negative lead. I think I did it right, but unbeknownst to me, I had a short in the little electrical transformer. This little thing, sometimes it would work, sometimes it wouldn't and I thought the light was bad or the wiring was bad. And as you can imagine, it turned into a nightmare. Several of the lowest level ones, I pulled all the wiring back out and re-strung the wiring testing until I figured out it was this little thing here. But I have them all working now. You can tell they do flicker. And one other point I'll make, each light comes with its individual resistor. Well, although these resistors are are quite small, it would be a nightmare to try and run one for each lamp. I went to my local electronics store and they gave me one that this resistor could run up to 10 individual lamps. So one resistor for 10 lamps. So I don't pretend to be an electrician or tell you how to do that, but if you're working with wiring, go to a, a local electronics store and see if they won't help you out. Take some of the lights in with you along with the resistors that came with the lights and they should be able to fix you up. The next thing that I realized I wanted to tackle was putting cargo on this lower level. I don't want to put this deck on and then try and maneuver cargo to different places and also the cannons. So I thought, you know what? I need to make the cannons. So I started building cannons. That went okay, but it is very time consuming. As many as you know, you've done this before. Uh, I, I did some unique things on the cannons, so I'll show that when I get to the point of them being installed. I also uh, found that I had in my little supply, I have some uh, sea barnacles that are real. I also purchased a few more, so I'm going to utilize those. Some other sea creature type things that I'm going to, to add to the build, but all that takes time to think, when do I want to install it? I really want to finish this lower deck. Uh, pretty much, and maybe the cannons, but I, I have to be careful with that too. Placement I have to figure out. I've done metal leaf on several of my models in the past, so I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on it, but I will do one piece so you can see. I'm currently using this Speedball brand metal leaf adhesive or sizing, and it's kind of a very watery white. You just brush it on and then let it dry for approximately 30 minutes. I don't know if you can see on this, probably not, but it's kind of looks like milk. And once it's dry, that will be clear. So the other brand that I used, it turned kind of a greenish color. I kind of preferred that because I could tell better. So I've, I've brushed them all. Here's a, a couple that I've finished. And you can see there are places where it did not take. That's fine because after I age this, I can darken that or I can always go back before I age it and do another coating of uh, the adhesive and some copper there. I'm not gonna do that. I will just darken it after I finish aging it, which will be the next step. As soon as this dries, I'll show you how I apply the copper leaf to this. This piece I believe is dry enough. And here's the copper leaf that comes in different sizes. I cut this down so I can do one at a time just to show you. And leafing normally tells you to use a very soft brush. But for what I do, 
I'll start out with a soft one. This is pretty soft. You're just trying to get the copper to adhere to wherever there is an adhesive. And then I'll take a little stronger brush and try and get it in the crevices because I want the details to show. And now I'm going to brush away the excess. Normally what I will do is I will let get it to this stage and then I'll let it dry some more and then I'll come back and do aggressive brushing once I know that the adhesive is dry. Now on the back of these, I don't necessarily want any because I'm gonna glue this onto the ship at some point. I've had a very frustrating week or two. I was going to patina the copper leaf using a mixture of salt or salt and vinegar and then in an ammonia fuming uh, container. I, it has failed miserably. It, it don't, will not work with this. I've had to brush it off and get it back to normal and then recopper. All the trouble I had with aging these uh, metal pieces. Now this is about the fourth time I've stripped them, recoppered them still would not work. I tested a piece of wood and it did exactly what I wanted those to do. And I'm currently doing a couple of buckets in here. And this has probably only been half hour. Oops. Let's go ahead and just take it all the way out here and look at the patina. Get in a little better light maybe. That's exactly what I wanted, but I couldn't achieve it. So if anyone knows why that metal would not allow the copper to patina. Here are all the pieces after the copper leaf has been applied. On this particular one, I purposely left it off the face and the spinal column there and the hands. I've decided I'm going to paint those kind of a bone white or an off color white. This piece, I think I'm just going to paint because it's all uh, skeletal. So I'm not gonna age that with the copper. These are the anchors. Lantern base and top. So instead, I'm going to use this method and this is using this Novacan black patina. It's for solder and lead, and it ages it. It is a uh, acid base, and the vapor is harmful and can cause burns, so have a well-ventilated area. But I'll show you on one piece how I get this effect. Here's some that I've already done the patina work on, and I'll just show you the one time. Again, use this in a well-ventilated area. I just use it straight. You can mix it with water and let something soak in it and slowly have it turn. But I prefer to just do it quickly and then put it over in the water to stop the, uh, the effects. You'll see it happens pretty quickly. You can see that changing color. This way I can kind of control how long. Because I do want a little bit of the coppery effect, but I also want it to be dark. So the longer I let that sit, the darker that will get. And that's probably about where I want it. So now give it a couple of rinses of water. Lightly towel dry. and set it aside. That should give you an idea of what I'm going for. Now, in reality, I wanted to use the, the ammonia bath, the fuming it, and it would get a, a green patina. Some of these did get some of that. You can see on this particular character, it has a little of that aqua patina. Here's the completed group that I just finished. And I, I like the look of it. I like the little hint of copper and the darkness that goes with it. 
they're still a little bit damp from the water rinse, but I think that gives you a pretty good idea of what it's going to look like. Here are my seashell lanterns in place and lit. This will be the, the lower deck, not the lowest. That's way down here. And actually they've turned out pretty good after the disasters that I went through. All of them are lit and working just fine. This will give you an idea what the lanterns look like in dim lighting. You can also see the work that I did on the lowest level with the seaweed and different things down there. I showcased that in an earlier video. You can see some of my electrical wiring. It appears to be in the way or visible now. I don't think it'll be visible once I close the ship in. I appreciate everyone's patience as I work through some of these difficulties that I just kind of stumble on on my own. This is Boiler Dan 1, and as always, thanks for watching.